God bless you. My name is Pastor Harris Kakalides, and you're watching and hearing the program, Gain to Know Jesus. And today we're going to talk about the second church of Asia Minor, which John the Beloved Apostle writes to them from Patmos, and that's Smyrna. Uh, we're going to speak about this church, and let's read Revelation chapter 2, verses, verses 8 to 11. And to the angel of the church of Smyrna, write these things, says the first and the last, who was dead and came to life. I know your works, tribulation, poverty, but you are rich, and I know the blaspheme of those who say they are Jews and are not, but are a synagogue of Satan. Do not fear any of those things which you are about to suffer. Indeed, the devil is about to throw some of you into prison, that you may be tested, and you will have tribulation ten days. Be faithful unto death, and I will give you the crown of life. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. He who overcomes shall not be hurt by the second death. Now, let's talk about the city of Smyrna for just a couple um, minutes. The city of Smyrna was located about 40 miles north of Ephesus. Paul doesn't make mention of, of ever going there, ever gone there, and we don't see um, him in, in any missionary trip there in Acts as well. We know one of the first bishops were um, in Smyrna was Polycarp, which he suffered martyrdom uh, in Smyrna itself. Um, and he possibly um, the bishop that um, or the pastor that uh, the angel of the Church of Smyrna was Polycarp, who, who John, what the beloved apostle, was speaking to. This th city was destroyed and for hundreds of years not known about. And then, out of nowhere, Alexander the Great rebuilt it and made it well-known. It was a well-known city. It was a beautiful city. A very gorgeous city. It was a city that we could say that was dead and rose again, just like Jesus as well. Let's read Revelation 2, verse 8. It says, And to the angel of the church of Smyrna write these things, saith the first and the last, who was dead and lived again. Jesus presents himself as the first and the last. A name for Jehovah in the Old Testament, Isaiah 41, 4, who has wrought and done it. Calling the generations from the beginning, I, Jehovah, the first and the, with the last, I am he. Isaiah 44, 6, thus says, saith Jehovah, the king of Israel, and his redeemer, Jehovah of hosts, I am the first and I am the last, and besides me there is no God. Isaiah 48, verse 12, hearken unto me, O Jacob, and Israel my called. I am he, I am the first and all i also am the last so we know that's a name for jehovah in the old testament and jesus calls himself jehovah he calls himself the first and the last he also presents himself as who was dead and lived again the one who defeated death by raising from the dead revelation 1 8 I am the Alpha and Omega, saith the Lord God, who is and who was and who is to come, the Almighty. Revelation 1, verses 17 and 18. And when I saw him, I fell at his feet as one dead. And he, said, and he laid his right hand upon me, saying, Fear not, I am the first and the last and the living one. And I was dead, and behold, I am alive forevermore and have the keys of death and Hades. This is why the scriptures calls him, Jesus, the firstborn from the dead. Colossians 1, verses 18. And he is the head of the body, the church, who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in all things he might have the pre and miss. There was persons in the Old Testament and New Testament that died, 
and rose from the dead, but Jesus is different. He rose not to die again, but to live forever. If anyone needed to hear this, is the church of Smyrna. There was a persecuted church whose members was being killed for their faith. Jesus was saying to them, Just like I rose from the dead, you will someday, too, n- never to die again. Firstborn from the dead implies more to come, more that will raise from the dead, never to die again, through Jesus Christ, of course. So, this is what Jesus says to the church of Smyrna. And, and the city of Smyrna was a city that was destroyed. And for many years, it was never heard of. And then out of nowhere, Alexander the Great rebuilds the city. And it becomes a well-known city. So it, it, it comes again from dead. So, they, they, they were living in a city like that. There were a church that was being persecuted, and, and Jesus told them, Look at me, I died, and I rose again, and, and have faith. Have faith in me. When you die, you will rise again as well. Don't be scared of death. Christians should not be scared of death. We are promised persecution in this life. Every Christian is promised persecution. We're told that we will be persecuted. We're not told that life is going to be easy for us. We're told that we're going to suffer. We are going to go through things. Uh, Jesus says in Matthew 10 verses 22 says, And you will be hated by all for my name's sake, but he who endures to the end will be saved. So we're told time and after time that Christians will suffer. In verses 9, it states, And I know your works, tribulation and poverty, but you are rich. And I know the blaspheme of those who say that they are Jews and are not, but are a synagogue of Satan. Unlike the church which is of Laodicea, which thought they was rich and was poor, this church, though they saw themselves poor, was in reality rich in spiritual blessings. And the blaspheme of them that say they are Jews and they are not, this means about the true spiritual Israel, is not of circumcision of the flesh, but is of the heart. Um, Philippians 3 verses 3 says, For we are the circumcision who worship by the Spirit of God and glory in Christ Jesus and have no confidence in the flesh. Romans 2, 29, but he is a Jew who is one inwardly, and circumcision is that of the heart and in the spirit, not in the letter, whose praise is not of men, but of God. Colossians 2, verse 11, in whom ye were also circumcised with a circumcision not made with hands in the putting off of the body of the flesh in the circumcision of Christ. Every Gentile believer and Jewish believer enter into the promises of God at conversion. When they receive Jesus Christ as their Savior, they enter into the promises of God. They become children of Abraham. You might say, well, ain't the Jewish children of Abraham? Yes, physically, but not spiritually. I am not saying that the Jews will not come back to Christ. I will talk about this in a few. But... The Jewish nation will come back to Christ. But I'm speaking about uh, those who are not Jewish and, and those who even are Jewish. They're not spiritual Jews unless they come to Jesus. Ephesians 2 verse 11 and 19 says about Gentiles. Wherefore, remember that once ye, the Gentiles in the flesh, who are called uncircumcised by that which is called circumcision in the flesh made by hands that ye were at that time separate from Christ alienated from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers from the covenant of the promise having no hope and without God in the world but now in Christ Jesus ye that was once far off are made now in the blood of Christ for he is our peace who made both one and break down the middle wall of part 
temptation, having abolished in the flesh the enmity, even the law of commandments contained in the ordinances, that he might create in himself of the two one new man, so making peace, and might recline them both in one body unto God through the cross, having slain the enmity thereby. And he came and preached peace to you that were far off, and peace to them that were now. Talking about the Jews. For through him we both, Jews and Gentiles, have our access in one spirit unto the Father. So then ye are no more strangers and and sojourners, but ye are fellow citizens with the saints, and the household of God. So Gentiles, they come in to becoming the Israel of God as well. With the Jews who come to Jesus. <clears throat> this is not saying that God has forgotten national Israel. For he has not. And God has a plan for them. To open their eyes. Those who are alive when this happens. Romans 11 verse 26 and so all Israel shall be saved, even as is written, There shall come out Zion, the deliverer. He shall turn away ungodliness from Jacob. And Zechariah 12, verses 10, And I will pour upon the house of David and upon the inhabitants of Jerusalem the spirit of grace and of supplication. And they shall look unto me, whom they have pierced, and they shall mourn for him, as one mourneth for his only son, and shall be in bitterness for him. As one that is in bitterness for his firstborn. And Revelation 1 7 Behold, he cometh with the clouds, and every eye shall see him, and they that pierce him, and all the tribes of the earth shall mourn over him. Even so, amen. Talking about them who pierced them, the Jews. Till then, their hearts, the Jewish hearts, are now hardened, but not all of them. There are Messianic Jews which believe in Jesus as their Messiah. Romans 11 verses 25 states, For I would not, brethren, have you ignorant of this mystery, lest ye be wise in your own conceit, that a hardening in part hath fallen in Israel until the fullness of the Gentiles be come in. But those Jews who are not Christians are those who call themselves spiritual Jews, but yet they are not spiritual Jews. But they are the synagogue of Satan. I want to tell you something. Anyone who does not worship Jesus Christ is worshiping the devil, whether you're Jew or not. If you're not serving Jesus, you're serving the devil. And your service that you do is for him and not God. John chapter 8, verses 39 to 44. Let's read it. They answered and said unto him, talking about the Pharisees and the scribes, which are Jews, Our father is Abraham. Jesus saith unto them, If ye were Abraham's children, ye would do the works of Abraham. But now ye seek to kill me, a man that have told you the truth which I heard from God. This did not Abraham. Ye do the works of your father. They said unto him, We were not born of fornication. We have one father, even God. Jesus said unto them, If God were your fathers, ye would love me, for I came forth and am come from God. For neither have I come of myself, but he that sent me. Why do ye not understand my speech? Even because ye cannot hear my word. Ye are of your fathers the devil, and the lust of your father it is your will to do. He was a murderer from the beginning, and standeth not in the truth, because there is no truth in him. When he speaks a lie, he speaks of himself, for he is, the, he is a liar and the father of it. So, let's understand this. When Jesus calls them the synagogue of Satan, they think they're Jews, but they are a synagogue of Satan. Jesus is referring to anyone who doesn't serve Jesus, whether you're Jew or not, you are are worshiping Satan you are if you go to a service and, and none of them are believers in Jesus uh, what is that that's a synagogue of Satan 
So these Jews that were persecuting the church of Smyrna, they were the synagogue of Satan because they were not believers in Jesus. And they were against the church. Okay, verses 10. Fear not the things which thou art about to suffer. Behold, the devil is about to cast some of you into prison, that ye may be tried, and ye shall have tribulation ten days. Be thou faithful unto death, and I will give thee the crown of life. I hold the view that, tri that tribulation ten days means ten different persecution, which the early church in whole had. The word for day could also mean time or seasons. So those ten days could mean ten different persecution. If you was to read Fox's book of uh, uh, martyrs, you, you will find out that there was ten different persecution. The first one was in 67 A.D. Second one was 81 A.D. Third one was 108 A.D. Fourth one was 162. Fifth one was 192. Sixth one was 235. Seventh one was 249. The eighth one was 257. And the ninth one was 274. And the tenth persecution was 303 AD. On the screen, you will have the emperors that persecuted the Christians under those times. So, Jesus is telling them that they will be in persecution. Ten different times. They will go on the persecution. But if they were faithful. They will receive the crown of life. This is also promised. In James chapter 1 verses 12. To those who endure trials and temptations. James chapter 1 verses 12 says. Blessed is the man. Who endures temptation. For when he has been approved he will receive the crown of life which the Lord has promised to those who love him there is a crown for those who love God and it is the crown of life and those who go to persecution they will receive those who go to persecution because of Jesus Christ they will receive the crown of life I think it's more than just internal life. I think it's an actual crown. Besides receiving internal life, which is included in this, they shall receive a crown as well. So as in Revelation 4 and 5, you see the king's um, 24 elders take their crowns and, and put it in front of the Lord. Um, you'll be able to take your crown and, and, and put it before the Lord. And say, worthy are you, O Lamb, to receive glory and honor, because you have died for our sins. Let's go to Revelation chapter 2, verses 11. It states, He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith to the churches. He that overcometh shall not be hurt of the second death. The second death is the name for the lake of fire. After the great white throne judgment, which everyone who has not put their faith in Jesus will go through. The Christians will not go to the great white throne judgment. They will go to the judgment seat of Christ, which is totally different. Um, we will Another day, we will talk about the judgment seat of Christ, which will receive rewards. But Jesus is saying to the Christians, if you're faithful to the very end, you, you will not go through the second death. He that overcometh. How do they overcome? Through faith. Um, through the blood of Christ. Through obedience. They overcome. Uh, I, I, I've talked about overcoming in the last message. In the message of the Ephesians. The church of Ephesians. But I want to talk about the second death. I want to look at two scriptures. Two passages in scripture. Revelation 21 8 that says, But for the fearful, the unbelieving, the abominable, and murderers, and fornicators, and sorcerers, and idolaters, and all liars, 
their part shall be in the lake that burneth with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. That is a scary thing, but it's for those who are unbelievers. The unbelieving is those that are fearful. They're fearful in what? Are they fearful in God? No, they don't fear God, at least the real fear of God. They're fearful because they're scared to serve God because they're scared of what other people are going to think about them. They're scared to give their life to Jesus because they're scared of what their friends are going to think about them. Those are fearful. And those who commit suicide because they're going through a situation which God could, could solve. Those are fearful. And there's many other definitions for fearful. Those who deny Jesus because they're scared. We need to be careful not to deny Jesus because if we deny him, he will deny us. Revelation 20 verses 11 and 15 talking more about the great white throne and then the second death states. And I saw a great white throne and him that sat upon it from whom face the earth and the heaven fled away and there was found no place for them. And I saw the dead, the great and small standing before the throne and the books were open and another book was open which is the book of life and the dead were judged out of the the things which were written in the books according to their works the christian doesn't get judged according to his works he gets judged not according to his work because jesus took his judgment on the cross we continue um in revelation 20 and the sea gave up the dead that were in it and death and Hades gave up the dead that were in them. And they were judged with every man according to their works. And death and Hades were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. Even the lake of fire. And if any was not found written in the book of life, he was cast in the lake of fire. This is scary if you're not a christian believer because we know what's scary about it because it's not just the fact that the non-believer in jesus the the, the one that's not a true christian in christ is not just the fact that they're going to burn in hell but after they're burning in hell they're gonna get out of hell just for a moment to be judged and then go to a bigger hell which is the lake of fire oh it's a sad fate for those who don't believe in jesus it's a sad fate for those who haven't received him as lord and savior and for those who are not covered in his blood is a sad fate if you're a christian you don't have to worry about it because like i said Christ received your punishment. Look at what John chapter 3 verses 15 to 17 states. It says that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believe in him should not perish by everlasting life. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world. But that the world through him might be saved. And verses 18. Which after this we, I'll say a few words and we're in. Of John chapter 3. He who believes in him is not condemned. He's not going to go to the second death. He's not going to go to the. To the. Great white throne judgment. But he who does not believe is condemned already. He's a condemned man. Because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. I want to read some verses real quick. And and then we're done. I know I said I was gonna uh, that was going to be the last verse. But there's a couple other verses. John 5, 24. Most assuredly I say to you, he who hears my word and believes in him... Who sent me has everlasting life and shall not come into judgment, 
but has passed from death into life. Again, the Christian is not condemned. John 5.24 says it very clearly. John 6.40 says, And this is the will of him who sent me, that everyone who sees the Son and believes in him may have everlasting life, and I will raise him up at the last day. That's John 6.40. John 6.47. Most assuredly I say to you, he who believes in me has everlasting life. John 20 verses 31 says, But these are written that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that believing you may have life in his name. When does this life begin? This life begins in the moment of conversion. As soon as you receive Jesus as, uh, as your Savior, you have everlasting life. It is not is not afterwards is the moment you believe you have everlasting life and when you die you have security that you will not go to hell first john 5 verse 11 and this is the testimony that god has given us internal life and this life is in his son he who has the son has life he who does not have the son of god does not have life. Verses 13 of 1 John 5. And then we're done. These things I have written to you. Who believe in the name of the Son of God. That you may know that you have eternal life. And that you may continue to believe in the name of the Son of God. It is not what the Greek Orthodox or the Roman Catholic Church or the Armenians tells you. You cannot know that you have eternal life. Till the very end or the Adventists will tell you. You cannot know you have eternal life. The Bible tells me I can know that I won't be judged in the last judgment. I can know I have eternal life. The Bible tells me I have eternal life the moment I believed in Jesus. The moment I put my faith on him. The moment I recognized that I was a sinner. And I needed a Savior. And I needed a Lord. And I said, Lord Jesus, take control of my life. I am a sinner. I need your blood atonement. And at that moment, Jesus Christ gave me eternal life. And it's a sure thing. God bless you. My name is Pastor Harris Kalidis. And I'll see you in the next program, Again to Know Jesus, where we go to the next church of, the, of Revelation. Bye.